I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Creek Devil. We have Marcy joining us today. Marcy, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. For those who remember Jarrett, who was on recently, you're his mother. So um, he said you listened to his interview and you had some things you had to correct. So I guess what we'll do is we'll just have you uh, start from the beginning and tell us all the things that have happened. Pretty much everything that he said happened. He just kind of grouped it all together into one event, and it wasn't just one event. We um, bought the place, and we ignored a lot of the stuff. Um, It was more feelings than, you know, actual sightings and rationalizing, well, there's bear, there's deer, Um, it's something walking through the woods, Um, you kind of got like a fishbowl effect when you were on the property. Um, He said he shared pictures of the cabin with you. Um, Yes, he did. The cabin, when you were in the bedroom, there was a big picture window. So it was open. You were, we had, I I think it was 10 acres of virgin forest. It's never been forested. So we had these massive, huge pine trees. And then where the house was, it was cleared. So you had all of these massive trees around you. And then, you know, the house itself, you had these big picture windows um, in the kitchen on two sides in the bedroom. And then there was a living room that had a big picture window on one side and the whole back towards the lake was just nothing but sliding glass. So when you would sit in the house, you just kind of felt like, like I said, like it was a fishbowl effect, like anything could look in on you. So we would, you know, feel creepy every once in a while and we would ignore it. Um, we would sit out the fire and um, there'd be different times where it's like, okay, well, that's a, that's got to be a deer walking through. Um, and then you would hear other things um, like an owl almost. After you would hear the footfalls, um, but it was a different it, where you, you weren't rationalizing. Oh, okay, well, it must be a deer. It just the best way I can describe it is a feeling would come over you, um, just like okay, well, that's that's enough. We it's time to go in. Um, and I have German shepherds. Um, and I had a 147-pound male that was at my side all the time up there, um, and a female. And the female, she was my ride or die, and she would lay down her life for me. And it would get up there with her, and she would just be like, no, oh, I'm staying inside. I'm not coming out. Which we just equated it she you know she she was a girly girl she didn't want the mud and anything but then when the there would be times in the morning um a couple of times in the evening when I would go to let my mail out and he wouldn't go and this dog I mean he was massive he was basically a king shepherd he wasn't scared of anything he ran the place he called the shots you know if you weren't welcome on his property he'd let you know and he was very proud but he would 
actually refused to go outside and go to the bathroom and make a mess inside. And that wasn't him. And, and no matter what you could do, you can get get him outside. Um, we had several occasions like that happen. And then the main event that Jarrett just, I mean, I believe that there are things out there that haven't been found yet. I'm a big believer in that. Um, I, you know, read my kids, Randy Smith, all of the, you know, different books on things, um, Monster Quest, all of that. So it's not that I don't believe, but the best way I can describe it is I know I saw something. I know what I saw, but I can't say what I saw. I can't 100% say it's almost like my brain stopped afterwards. Um, My dog had to go to the bathroom. It was either September or October because they were grouse hunting. Um, Our property was up in Mercer, Wisconsin, which is in Iron County, which is sandwiched right up in the middle of the UP. You've got Duluth on one side and you've got Michigan on the other. Um, An hour either way to whichever state you want. Um, We were on what was called the turtle flambeau flowage. And we had, um, I want to say it was like a state, it's state land. But I think it was kind of like a state park kind of a thing. Um, everything around us was state land. Um, the flowage was state land. Um, and then we had the Indian Reservation to like the north west of us um which was the lack of flambeau um we know that there were moose and bear we were told um by our neighbors they had trail cams they would show us the pictures and say we had a moose we had a baby down here but don't say anything um that was the other thing that i think jared had touched on um what they explained to us was the um because of it kind of being state land and Indian reservation land, if moose are found, the Indians have the right, I think, to hunt. The people just didn't talk about it because they didn't want the moose to be taken. So that could have been something that was walking through the woods. I imagine that probably sounds like really loud, um, but we've never, we never saw it. We just saw the pictures. And I think that was more typically in the later fall. And this was early fall that it happened. Um, my dog, it was about 4.30 in the morning. It was just kind of gray I don't, where it's, the fog's coming off of the lake. The sun's just starting to come up. It's still dark, but you can see everything. Um, but within a distance, it's kind of like the the fog or the dew is kind of like hanging on the trees. Um, so it, you can make stuff out, but it's hard. Um, my dog came yeah. off of the deck. I sent the deck waited for him. And German shepherds are very particular. Sometimes they have their places where they go to the bathroom and you don't, you know, if you have to go number two, they go here. If they have to, you know, go number one, they go on this side. And my dog had to go number two. So what he did was he came off the deck, walked around my um, truck, and there is a little piece of um, wood that he would go in. The wind was coming 
off of the lake blowing away from us. So it actually was blowing towards where I saw what I saw. And he was probably out there, I don't know, five to eight minutes, I'd say, doing what he had to do. Like, okay, wrap it up. Let's go. It's time to go back and go into bed. And he came around the truck and looked at me and just, you know, your animals, you know, their looks, you, but it's like, okay, well, what's wrong, buddy? He looked like he was alerting on something, but at the same time, he wasn't. And I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's just go inside. Then he went around the front of my truck, and I'm like, well, come on, guy. Let's go inside. And as soon as I said that, I looked up because I heard something, and I looked towards the outhouse. And there's this big, huge pine tree, like two trees over from the outhouse. And I looked at it, and as soon as I looked at it, a hand and a head came around, looked at me, and I went, oh, like that. And as soon as I did that, and it was probably, I'm not good with distances, but it was probably 75 feet away from me. Um, as soon as I made that noise, kind of like, you know, how somebody plays peekaboo, where they kind of, they're they're not reaching around, but they just kind of, step out and then step back in and hide themselves with a tree. That's what happened. And this, I, I'm like, what, what the heck? And I thought, okay, well, it's 4.30 in the morning. I had heard gunshot. I thought, it must be a hunter. It's awfully early for them to be hunting right now. Why is this guy in my yard? Did he use my outhouse? I maybe he had an you know an emergency. Okay, well that's fine. But then I thought, well I I don't know nowhere here, and I've got some person on my property. What the heck's going on? And my dog looked at me. He's like, it's time to go in now. And I got this really weird feeling. And I looked back at the tree, and. I could see that something was still there. I thought, oh, geez, it must be a bear. You know, it's not a deer. It must be a bear. So I just got this really creepy feeling. And my dog, I opened up the door. I kept staring where I was looking. I did not turn my back on it. And I'm like, Hmm. It was almost like my brain stopped. Like I was trying to rationalize what I was seeing, but I, I, my brain couldn't figure it out. I backed into the house, still looking at that tree. I did not want to take my eyes off of it. I locked the screen door, which I don't know why I thought that would help. And I locked the, the, the deadbolt on the door. I went back into my bedroom. I locked my bedroom door. I put my pillow back over my head and I went to bed for a couple more hours. And when we got up that morning, I said to my husband, I don't know what I saw, but I saw something. Somebody was in our yard. And he is a police officer, been a police officer for 30 something years. And he said, Well, what did you see? And I said, Well, it had to have been a person. And he goes, well, where did you see it? And I stood on the deck and he, I pointed to the tree. I said, over there. So he starts walking over to the tree and he's looking in back of it. And he goes, okay, well, the ground's not disturbed. And we have pine needles and it was dry. Um, It hadn't been raining. So you would think that if it was a deer or something, that the ground would be moved. 
Um, he goes, well, I don't see footprints. There's nothing in the sand over here that I can tell. It just, you know, looks normal. And he goes, well, where did you see them? And they said, stand in back of the tree. So he did. And I said, the head peeked out. And he said, well, where, he goes, let me hold my hand up. He goes, where, you tell me when to stop. And he got to the point where I saw it and he stopped and he stepped out and looked up. And he's 5'9", I'd say. And he was on his tippy toes with his arm all the way up over his head. So I'd say seven and a half feet, maybe up in the tree is where the head was. And I went, okay, well, if it was a bear, wouldn't we, would we see, you know, claws, marks or something in the tree? I didn't, I, I heard absolutely nothing the whole time. I thought it was really quiet. It, I mean, you, there was, you couldn't even hear the wind. It was almost like you were in, My guess would be like what a wormhole would be like. It was almost like you were, I mean, like in a vacuum. I mean, there was there was no noise. You couldn't hear the wind. There were no birds. There were no angry black squirrels making noise. Even the sound of the hunters. What I mean, there was nothing. So hey, I was, Marcy? Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. This is David. Whenever you saw it peek out from behind the tree, did you just see a silhouette? Were you able to make out any detail at all? I, in my brain, I thought I was looking at a man. Okay. But it was shadowed. Um, gotcha. The, the head was round like a man. You know, in my brain... First thing I went to was who the F's on my property. Right. And the other thing was, okay, well, if this is a person, this dog right here would be all over it. Even with the wind blowing away from us towards there, I mean, this dog was amazing. And he didn't pick up on it. Which I thought was weird because, I mean, he never missed a beat. And he was almost like, I know something's over there, but I'm not going to look over there. And we're just going to go inside, right? I don't even want to eat. Let's just go back to bed. And that's what we did. We went back to bed. But when my husband put his hand up there, I'm still standing on the deck pointing him to where it was. And he's looking around. He goes, well, I don't know what you saw. He goes, it must have been an animal. I said, well, a deer's not that. You couldn't stand that high. There's nothing over there for the deer to stand on. It's just big pine trees. I'm like, so it must have been a bear? Because we have black bear up there. Um, there there was a mom that would go around with her babies, you know, but she never came on our property. And one of the things that my German shepherd would do was he would poop in certain areas of the yard, um, usually around the perimeter, this is mine, you're not coming in. And, you know, we, I just, it was eerie. And I, and I told my, the more I talked to my husband about it, I'm like, I saw something. I just, in my brain, my brain's not working. I can't get it to, Tell me what I saw. It it doesn't make sense that it was a person because if it was a person, they would have had to have had a belt and spikes to get up that high. They would have had to have some sort of a ladder or something to get there. And I just don't see, you know, some average Joe just tromping around the foliage with a ladder, just, you know, climbing up people's trees. There was nothing for them to hang on to. It was, I'd say the tree was probably... At least five feet round, if not more. It was it was a big tree. So, and 
we just kind of, I'm like, okay, well, I, I don't get it. I don't know what I saw. We would be, the first, the first couple of weeks we were there, this is going back. Um, and me and my son, Jarrett, talked about this. He's like, you put up blankets. Why? I'm like, because I swear to God, you know, it must have just been the fishbowl effect, but it, I swear to God, something's looking at me. And I would always hear like a, almost kind of like a, a knocking, like, um, like a woodpecker, but not a woodpecker. Um, and then you would just get this eerie feeling and you would look out there thinking something's looking back at me. And there was a couple of times I would look out into the trees and I swear to God, I saw something looking back at me. I'm like, ah, you're just, you know, you're just seeing things, your mind's, you know, making this bush look like something else. I would always just rationalize it away. But after this happened, it's like, okay, well, I'm not the only one that sat out by that fire where we were just kind of like, you know what? It's time to go in. Didn't worry about even putting out, didn't care if the forest burnt down. We just dropped what we were doing and we went inside. There were just, it was like a everything went quiet and it was it just got eerie. I mean, eerie scary. And I would stay up there by myself with the dog, um, finishing um, working on the inside of the cabin. And he was a yard dog, so he you know he didn't wander, and he had no problem going out during the day and sitting. But come around four o'clock, he'd want to be out there by himself. If it was early in the morning, he went out, he did what he had to do, he came back in. If it got to be after four or five o'clock um, and the crows started going and they'd stop, he's like, it's time to come inside. And this dog always wanted to be outside. And it was it was hard to explain, but at the same time, you just didn't think about it. Um, there were marks on my windows when I would clean the house, almost like with all of the, um, like pine pollen smeared, but n- not where you could see, you know, that there were handprints. You couldn't see that there were face prints, but you could see that like something wet smeared up against them and the windows were probably a good six feet, seven feet off the ground because the cabin came off of a hill. And then um it was just foundation and then like a kind of like a deck. So it's like, okay, well that's annoying. Where did that come from? It was just after it happened, I, I just, I'm like, okay, well, I know what I saw, but I don't know what I saw. I can't 100% say what I saw. I believe in that kind of stuff, but I I don't know that I believe that I saw it, but I know I saw something. It's just kind of like my brain it got to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm just, I can't think about it anymore. I'm, <laughs> I, you know, we, we were up in the winter. We never saw anything odd in the snow. We never saw footprints. Um, I mean, we saw big piles of poop from time to time, but I mean, there are a number of things that could have done that. Um, mainly I just figured it was the bear. Um, <laughs> we, I, I'd been going up there. My grandpa was born in Bayfield in the 1900s. Um, I'd been going up there since I was born in the 70s. So, I mean, it takes on a different feeling at times, but nothing that's ever made me feel like that. Um, 
we've seen some weird stuff in the sky from time to time up there. Um, but nothing that ever made me go, hmm. You know, it's like, oh, okay, well, that's a satellite or, you know, okay, well, I didn't know that that could fly that way, but it could be anything. But this was I don't have words for it. I, it it's a, that's the best way I can describe it. I I think my brain is trying to tell me you saw something. Hey Marcy, going yeah. back going back to you're describing about how you felt you were being watched. Was this before or after you saw it peeking out from behind the tree? Months before, years before, and after. We had had the property for probably, I'd say, four years when this happened. Uh-huh. Um, and the whole time. The the first week we moved in, um, the bedroom window um, in the master bedroom, it was just a two-bedroom cabin and I'm using master bedroom loosely, um, was just a big picture window. And they had just like a decorative balance and then kind of like a half curtain going over it. And we got up there. We had a fire the weekend that we moved in. And I thought, oh, this is nice. I can lay in bed and watch the fire from the window. And... I would wake up in the middle of the night feeling like something was watching me. And I, that, that first week we were there and it was always in the same area of the woods where my eyes would go. It was never random. It was always in the same spot. Um, the woods kind of opened into a little bit of, I'm thinking it was an animal path, like a clearing, and it was always in there that my eyes would go to. Um, Did this window face where you saw it peeking out from behind the tree? Yes. Um, It, you would have to position your body a little bit differently to see there, but it, it looked directly into that to the outhouse, to the woods, to where that was. And every time we would always hear the walking, it was that area. It was always there. Um, Could you tell it was bipedal walking? It sounded like it was on two feet. Okay. Um, You know, usually when the deers walk, you can hear, you hear them crunch you can hear them walk, but they also kind of have, with all of the vegetation and everything that hasn't been, you can kind of hear a shuffle. Right. When, when they're walking. And this was, it sounded like when you would hear it. And there were times when you were sitting out there, it's like, okay, that's a deer. You can hear a deer. But there there were a handful of times we were sitting out there. And my sister was sitting out there with me. And she, she got up and she left. She didn't say anything. She she just got up and she left and she went in the house. I'm like, okay, well, hopefully I can run faster than whatever this is because <laughs> I don't know if I can make it to the door. There were a few times we had that happen where it's like, oh. you couldn't see anything, but you just knew that if you look hard enough and close enough. And I always had a flashlight when I was out there because even though I wouldn't use it because it's like, I don't want to see what's coming at me. I just, I'll, I'll just take it or I'll run. <laughs> right. Whatever I got to do, you know, <laughs> there, it, the best, best way I can describe it is, um, like you told my husband, it is a, it is a feeling. It's kind of like, um, a butt pucker moment. Excuse my French. Kind of like when, you know, the tornado is coming and yeah. you, you know, it's okay. Well, I can't get to the basement and it's right here. It's like I'm good with God. It's it's coming. That that's the feeling you would get. It, almost like uh, it was dread. It was 
anxiety. It was like all of these feelings. But, and I mean, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a hysterical person. I, I believe in these things, but I never would believe that I would experience any of these things. You know, uh, when I hear other here. Can I break in here just a second, Marcia? Sure. At what point in time sure. did you start realizing that uh, uh, what you were uh, witnessing was uh, a Bigfoot? When Jarrett, when Jarrett pointed it out, um, he's like, do you realize what you saw, right? I'm like, I that day that it peeked out behind the tree, I think something in my brain clicked but just wouldn't let me believe it because I kept saying I saw something I just don't know what I saw and that's what I kept saying for a year until he was up there and I don't know how it even came up um and I and he's he's like well that my husband said oh well mom saw Bigfoot your mom saw Bigfoot and I'm like, yeah, I didn't have any Slim Jims. I, you know, he didn't stick around. <laughs> just, you know, I, I had to make fun of it because I, and he's, and he just got all serious. I didn't realize he was as serious about it as he was. And he, he's like, take me through it. What did you, what did you see? What did you, did you smell anything? I'm like, no, I didn't smell anything. The wind was blowing away. I said, and, and that's the thing. If I would have. I've I've heard that they're pungent. I heard, you know, I've heard that they they. And I'm like, look, if if that's what it was, even if it was a bear, Sarge should have been right on it. He should have, he would have known. And he acted like, yeah, there's something there, but let's go inside. I'm, you know, I'm I'm over this. Let's. And he's like, well, that's not Sarge. I'm like, well, I know that's not Sarge, but that's what he did. And I took him through it and. He gets out the tape measure and he's look he's looking at the ground. I'm like, well, it's been a year. Whatever's there, you know, is not going to be there. And granted, in the north woods, in the trees, stuff sounds loud sometimes. And we were up there for the winter. My husband went to go use the the outhouse, and he's like, oh my god, I don't know what was out there, but if I'm going out there again, I'm taking my gun because it was making so much noise. And I was so curious as to what it was that was in the back of the outhouse that was making all of this noise. I went out the next morning looking at the snow, and there were little bunny traps. So, I mean, you can get carried away with what you hear. I'm like, oh, those killer bunnies, you know. But this was <laughs> – it was something different, you know. And we, we make fun of each other about this stuff, but – my husband, you know, he's he's a police officer. He deals in facts. And he was like, you saw something. I know you saw something. I believe you saw something. Just you talking to me. He goes, you even saying something to me. He goes, you saw something. I'm like, yeah, but I can't say what I saw. I I can see it. I can play it over my head and I can see it. And when I look at it, when I'm looking at it head on, I see a face. I see the silhouette of a head, but I don't see features because it was that gray mist that was in the, it was hanging in the trees. It was hanging in the air. You know, it comes off the lake um, that early in the morning, but it was like I was looking at a shadow. But if I looked at the outhouse, which was what, which was a couple trees over, I could see our house. I could see that it was red. I, you know, I could see all of that. But if I look back at this tree, all I, I see the tree. I see the mist on the tree, and I just see shadow. When we interviewed Jarrett, he said basically that it was the height that got his attention and made him think yeah. of Bigfoot because it was almost eight foot tall, and you were up on the porch. And you were eye to eye with it, yeah. basically. Yeah, the um, yard kind of went at a slope, and I was on the front porch, which would take me 
about three feet off the ground and I'm five, four. Um, and I looked pretty much directly at whatever it was. Um, I maybe looked up a little, but when we walked off the porch and he's like, okay, he, he's, he got his tape measure and he's like, point with your hand and I'm pointing with my hand and I'm like, and he's going, he's going, he's going. And I'm like, it was there, right there. And I want to say he said it was like 7.5, something like that, almost eight. It was between seven, eight feet from the bottom of the tree to where this was. Um, He said it was over the outhouse. Or it was taller than the outhouse. Um, because the yard is still on a slope there, the tree would have been higher than the outhouse. Um, I don't know how tall the outhouse was, but it would have been at least even or maybe a little bit more, I'd say, than the outhouse. But it made me think that it had to be like it had to be something actually clinging to the tree. It had to be in the tree. But the movement, it like I told my husband, I said the best way I could describe it is how Jason Voorhees quietly came out of the lake or quietly went back into the lake. It was that kind of a movement where it was just and precise, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Try, trying to get the word to describe this has been, I mean, it, it took me almost a year to even come up with it. And we've talked about it a few times after, and I still don't know that I'm coming up with the right word. A lot of people, when they see them walk, they they say it's almost like watching a ghost. It just like glides or floats. Yes. There's no yes. bobbing or anything. Yes, it was. It was fluid. It was, and I can do it physically. And I showed him physically. I'm like, it did, you know, this, and then it was, but floating. Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the the best way I can describe it is like Jason Voorhees in the movies where he's just down and then quietly up, you know, but instead of it being that way, it was to the side and then back. I even, I, I feel like I'm crazy even talking about it now. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. <laughs> But I know I saw something, but it's like I I I can't 100%, and I don't know if it's just because, you know, my husband's always drilled into me, you know, because of law enforcement. You have to have the facts. You have to have the facts. You have to have the facts. It's kind of like I have the facts, but I don't have the facts. <laughs> so it's like I I, I know, I, I can 100% say I, said I saw something. I just can't 100% say what it was, but put in the category, okay, it wasn't a raccoon. It was those mean black squirrels up there. It wasn't one of those because my dog would have been all over it because they had a war going on with each other. You know, if it was a bear, where are the scratches of the trees? I, I don't know enough about bear, but I would think that there, you know, a bear climbing up the tree, it would have knocked some of the bark off or there would have been marks from it being there. Um, there were no hoof marks. Were you know? I mean, you get some pretty big deer up there, but there were no antlers. It was just a head. You know, if it would have been a buck, if it would have been a moose, and that was the other thing I thought was, well, maybe it, maybe it was a moose because those are pretty tall. I don't know if they're that tall, but I'm like, well, maybe it was a moose. And you know, I saw the silhouette of the head, but you know, moose are pretty big, and that was a big tree. But I would have saw the rest of the moose 
on the other side of the tree, I, I would have saw something. And it was almost like whatever it was, it was there. It peaked, it showed itself, and, like, it came back in, and then, poof, it was not there. The tree and, peaking is something that people witness and talk about all the time with these things. Really? Yeah. We we were we were hiking um in Potato Falls and you it was almost like it was a Morse code but you could tell that somebody was taking a stick or a log and beating it on a tree. And I was just joshing with my husband, like, well, we better hurry up. It's a long climb up. It, that sounds like Bigfoot. And I'm thinking he's, that's his, you know, form of Tinder or something. We might want to get out of here. And he's like, oh, yeah, well, I've got some for him. And he gets on the tree with a log and he starts beating him like, you don't know what you just replied. We might want to leave. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> you just might have set yourself up for a date or something. And you would... You would hear those kinds of things, um, and it would be, it almost, I mean, you you know what a stick or a log sounds like. It, it this sounded like sometimes it would sound like somebody was picking up a whole tree and beating up another tree. Sometimes it would sound like, you know, um, my python when they would have the coconuts and they would crack the coconuts together. But it would sound like somebody was doing that with, like, boulders or rocks or something. And you're like, well, what is that? I mean, you would hear noises that you just couldn't describe. So, Did you ever notice any patterns with that? Um, We only went to Potato Falls a couple of times. Um, no, not really. It was It was late afternoon. Um, anytime I would hear it and I, at the house, I would always just think, oh, well, he's got an owl. It must be an owl hooting, but it didn't sound like the owls at home. But because, you know, we would hear stuff, um, and we would go to Google what, you know, okay, well, what does noise is a bobcat make? Because we had a bobcat up there. I guess she was a lynx. Um, so it's like, okay. We Googled what that noise was like. Okay, well, that's what that was. That was her making that noise. Uh, she must have been calling after her kitten. You know, so we would Google stuff to try to rationalize, okay, what was that noise? But um, it was either usually really early in the morning, um, later in the evening, you know, going on to – It was it was either between, like – five and six or after nine um sure it talked about that because uh didn't he talk about how they would hear owls in the middle of the day or something like that yeah i believe so yeah which and and where that noise that owl noise was coming from was that same piece of wood where i kept felt feeling like something you know, was looking at me. And we did walk back there once or twice. Um, it was not forested, so it was very hard to get through. Um, I wanted to make sure that there were no eagles, nests, or anything up there because I didn't need something coming down um, and taking my dogs or, you know, attacking my dogs. I didn't want my dogs going in there and attacking anything. Right. Um, I saw nothing um, that would explain where an owl would be. I'm assuming, you know, dead tree, something. Where the noise sounded like it was coming from, if this makes sense, it sounded like it was closer to the ground than up in the air. Um, here we've got barn owls, and, we, you know, we get owls in the trees and stuff. And you hear them, but you kind of hear them from a distance and this was almost like it was okay where's the short tree with this bird sitting at there's got to be something here 
Uh, South no. America's. Oh, yeah. We heard stuff like that in Oregon two years ago. But it wasn't just like a hoo hoo. It almost sounded like. Like a one sided conversation, if that makes sense. It sounded like something was talking, but nothing was talking back to it. You know, like how you hear two birds, like the lake we're on now, we have eagles up there, and one's always squawking at the other, and the other one will squawk back and reply. And this was just a. Here, it's almost like a. With the owls here, it's. I guess I want to say rhythmic the way they make their noises and this would be like hoo hoo waiting for someone to reply back and nothing would reply back so it would start talking again if that makes sense yeah Um, and that was usually you know early in the morning late in the evening um But when you would hear stuff walking, it just, everything stopped. It, it almost, like, you couldn't even breathe. It, it, it almost, it, it felt like everything was just being sucked away from you, like you were in a vacuum or something is the best way. And then all of that dread and I can't even put the emotions into words it, and it it's, it drives me crazy that I can't explain it properly I I don't know it, the the feeling of being watched and then the and then you're just like well if I'm if, if it's my time it's my time I'm, and and I don't even know I would think something like that it's like well I guess, you know, I'll go down with a fight if I have to, but, it, you know, there's not much I can do. It, it's almost like I resigned myself to thinking, okay, well, something's coming out of those trees. Uh, I'm I'm done. Well, you're not alone. You're, you're in the company of a lot of people we've talked to, you know, that have had, okay. had the same experiences and feelings. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I just went and saw Josh Gate talk, you know. I, I believe in all that stuff. I just... I'm I'm having a hard time believing that it happened to me. If that makes sense, like okay, well, you see these these things on TV, you don't ever really experience stuff like that. I mean, I've experienced things in my life, but just like okay, without it coming out and going, you know, hey, hi, I'm Harry. You know, uh, welcome to the neighborhood. Do you mind if your dogs don't come over here? You know, it just, it wasn't tangible enough for me, I guess. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. It, I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around it still. And it's, you know, it's been six years now, something like that. Forrest, I think you can relate to that. Oh, she must be muted. <laughs> hey, I'm going to text me a minute to get it off mute because <clears throat> I don't like you listening to my cats meowing and everything in the background. <clears throat> um, yeah, I can relate to that. <laughs> um, you never know about when they'll show up. I mean, they even show up in the middle of eclipses. So um, <laughs> what can you say? But uh, We had one night that it was a meteor shower. Um, since she said something about eclipses and me, Jared and his brother, Gavin, were on the dock watching the meteor shower and I, you just said eclipses and this just came to my head. We were on the dock watching all the meteor showers and that feeling started up again. And the lake was down a hill so you had to look up at the house from the dock and um 
the reason why I'm I'm mentioning this is because it was that same spot again. We were watching the meteors and we had one that shot across the sky and it abruptly stopped. And I looked at Jared and Gavin like, those aren't supposed to do that, are they? And as soon as I said that, it shot in another direction. And this really weird feeling came over us. And my youngest son was like, well, that's it for me. I'm going to bed. And he runs up. We had five flights of stairs to get up to the cabin, I'd say. And he ran up every single one. And he did the same thing that the dogs did. He avoided that area and ran right into the house and shut the curtain. And before I could say anything to Jarrett, Jarrett took off. He's like, I won't tell you what he said, but it had something to do with some probing. And I'm left down there by myself. And I actually, I'm like, I panicked. And I'm like, do I shoot the gauntlet and try to get in the house? Do I stay here and try to see what that was, if it's coming back? I, I didn't know what to do. I actually froze. I panicked. And as I ran up the stairs, they had the slider, the curtain shut, and the slider locked. So I actually had to go around the house to the front on that porch. And I would not look in those woods, I I got to the top of the stairs and I put my eyes right on the ground. <laughs> it takes a lot to scare me. I, I think I'm pretty tough. But I was terrified. And I refused to look at the woods. I I refused to pick my eyes up. I actually ran face first in the door before I could get the door open because I was in such a hurry to get in the house. And pretty much after that, at night, we did not go down to the lake at all. I swear to God, if I would have looked up, it would have been looking at me. That, And I don't know. I don't know if I was thinking it was an alien. I don't know what I was thinking at the time. But whatever it was, I swear to God, if I would have looked it would have been looking at me. And I made a point every night I got blinds that I could roll down on the windows. If it hit six o'clock, I don't even care. I made my husband bring an air conditioner up because <laughs> those windows were getting shut. I did not sleep with the windows open because I wasn't going to let something reach through. Cause I, I swear to God that something was just going to reach through and grab me. I'm like, you're just being ridiculous, Marcy. You're you're an adult. Grow up. I'm like, nope. Windows are shut. Curtains are coming down. It's 6 o'clock. It's going to get dark soon. I don't need to see out. And whatever's out there doesn't need to see in. And that's just how I kept it until we sold the place. And Marcy, did y'all, did y'all ever notice if anything was messed with out, outside in the yard or cars had been messed with or touched or anything um my firewood on occasion um wouldn't be where i would put it um i tried putting flowers out i just equated it to deers eating them um even though i put mothballs and stuff in there um like i said the windows um were smeared and I don't know, you know, if that was something. I We cleaned them every year we opened. We cleaned them. I don't know if that's something that the pollen just collected on. And you didn't see, you didn't see handprints. You didn't see, like, someone lean their face up against the window or anything. But you could just tell that the pollen on the windows was smeared, like something Kind of like if you, like, blew fog onto a mirror and you rubbed it. That's what the pollen would look like. Um, 
it got to the point, the bugs are so bad out there. You know, we, we stopped going down to the lake. Um, we would occasionally during the day we would go down there, but we just, we stopped and I don't know why the, and the fishing wasn't good. So we just, the, the bugs started getting bad. We kept ourselves on the back deck, but for whatever reason, it got to be a certain time we were inside. Um, we, we were up by ourselves on there. So, I mean, if something walked by, we could have kicked it in the head and gotten house, whatever, we would have been okay. But something just kept us from being out there. And then it got to the point where if my husband wouldn't sit out and I, during the summer, we just stayed inside fall sometimes we would have a fire but if I was by myself if I couldn't get somebody to be out there with me I didn't go I just stayed inside were you having those feelings of being watched and that's what caused y'all not to stay out I think so uh for me it was that way um I don't know that my husband would ever admit it. Um, he thinks it's a bunch of hooey, but at the same time, he believes me. So, you know, dealing with somebody like that is very exhausting sometimes. <laughs> um, he's he's a naysayer, but, I mean, he's seen stuff in his career he can't explain. So at the same time, I I don't know. I the, the I was trying to tell him when I told Jarrett when like, you know you know he got most of it right you just kind of got it you just put it all into one big event and it was you know over a few years I told my husband I said I, you know it's not even so much the scene it's the feeling and it's not the feeling it's the feeling the kind of feeling, if that makes sense. You know, it's kind of like the stranger danger feeling. There's a, oh, well, I'm just being silly, and oh, no, my biology is telling me fight or flight, something's there. It was more of that than I never saw anything up until the point that I saw whatever it was by the tree, um, behind the tree. It was all hearing. Um, there were a couple of times you would smell. It would it would smell. It's like, oh, something's dead. But you couldn't pinpoint where it was, and it would go away. Um, and Jared's like, oh, that's, that's something to do with it, too. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, you never found any carcass. And it, was, it, would, it would just be a, almost like it floated through the air at you. And then it was gone. And then How you often around. did that happen? Um, I really couldn't say. A handful of times. Um, okay. well, we had the place for seven years. I mean, it's the North Woods. There's all kinds of smells. In the North Woods, you just never know. Plus, they had German Shepherd, so you just never knew. It just, it was like a rotten meat, um, decaying smell. Um, it's like, okay, well, something, something dead. It's got to be something dead, but then you couldn't find anything, and there was nothing to show that he was dead, and then it was just gone. It's like, oh, okay, well, that's something I don't have to clean up, and then you just wouldn't think about it. Right. It, talking about it now, it's just, it's very, I'm scratching my head. It's like, okay, how did I put some of this stuff together? <laughs> but at the same time, how am I putting it? I just, I, I'm repeating myself. I. <laughs> You're fine. 
there's been times where you you think you've seen something out of the corner of your eye. But you're like, okay, well, it was just a shadow. I, I don't know what that was. So you just ignore it, and you just don't rationalize it. So, you know, and then I had, they were teenagers, they were fighting, so you, you know, weren't thinking about anything but, oh, my God, you guys need to shut up, try to make them get along so you could enjoy yourself while you're up there. You know, the dogs want to do this or the dogs want to do that or, you know, we were going to go for the waterfalls. You know, we went into a lot of areas up there that should have been spooky but weren't compared to this, if that makes any sense. Um, We hiked the full Black River, um, Black River Falls Trail. And if anything should be spooky, it should be that. Because, I mean, you've got water on one side and dense wood on the other, and you're up and down hills, and there's waterfalls, and it was fine, feeling-wise. You just you didn't get any creepy feelings. But to go out your back door, I've never used the outhouse. I refuse to use it. I wouldn't go anywhere near it. Um, if I was in the yard, I was by the house. I didn't. If I had to go any further, I had a dog with me. And now I wonder why. Why was I like that? Because I'm not scared of anything. I box. You know, my husband's taught me self-defense. I'm, I'm a big girl. I can take care of myself. I am, I can put some hurt on you. I do CrossFit. I'm fit. I, I have no problem defending myself. But thinking back about it now, I turned into a big baby in certain situations up there, and I don't know why. Um, and it all I comes think that was just your woman's intuition kicking in, and you followed it. I guess I, <laughs> I. I don't know. I. I mean, that's in a nutshell. That that's the story. Um, I've seen bears in the woods up there. I know what they look like. Um, I know what they do. <laughs> Over the years, you know, I'm going to be 52 next month. I've been going up there since, you know, I was two years old. Um, I've never felt the way I felt all through that area like I did there. And the funny thing was the property that we were going to buy was the property next door. And... I told my husband, no, no way. This is, this is Camp Crystal Lake. We're not doing it. I want nothing to do with this over here. (laughs) And for whatever reason, that's where the woods go. I I don't know. I get, maybe it was intuition. (laughs) I don't know. The other property was way nicer than ours. It it would have been a lot less worse. Um, But I'm like, I want nothing to do with that. Nothing at all. <laughs> and we wound up buying that property. Um, I don't miss it. I, I I don't miss it at all. We, we've got a place now that, you know, I've got all kinds of other people around me, which I miss the solitude of having that, you know, but I don't miss the – I like to know that um, – I can walk outside and I I don't feel like anything's staring at me. Even though I've got, you know, 10 other trailers around me, I could follow the trailer and it wouldn't bother me. (laughs) I wouldn't feel like anybody's looking at me. I couldn't do anything up there where I didn't feel like something wasn't watching me. It's like, okay, well, do you like the paint color I'm putting on the walls? Would you like me to do this kind of stain instead of that kind? You know, here, we're making dinner. You know, it, I just felt like I had eyes on me constantly. And I had a neighbor two acres away on one side and, I don't know, maybe... They were the other neighbor on the other side. They were only up. They they did more of the winter stuff, so they weren't it, it, they weren't up when we were up. 
and the people that were two acres away from us were two acres downhill on a point. So you couldn't see their house. All you saw was trees. So it's not like, you know, they were staring at us. They were nowhere near near us. And they had big um, wolfhounds. I think those were the big Irish wolfhound dogs. Those, yeah. dogs never, those dogs never made a noise. They're, they never made a peep. And for whatever reason, he would never let them out. He's like, no, nope, but I got to keep them close. And it's like, oh, okay. We had a dog that, um, Jaeger, he was our problem child. I don't know whatever possessed him to do it because his recall was good. You know, he would go on tangents every once in a while, but you could recall him back, um, especially if his brother Sarge was there. They were always on your side, and this dog would get it in his head that he would need to run away. But we figured out he wasn't running away far into the woods from us. He was actually going to the side of the property into a stand of trees. <laughs> And he did what this thing did. He hid behind the trees and he would just peek out. And we'd be looking for him for hours and that's where he was at. He was behind one tree. And he did that to us on a couple occasions. And it was always later in the evening that he would do it. And, you know, we were told there were fishers up there. So we, I'm sure he could have fought one off, but we didn't want him, you know, getting hurt. So we always made sure that they were close, but every once in a while, he would just go and hide behind a tree. And he would peek out, and where he was peeking out was right at that outhouse, right at that area of woods. It was the same spot every time. It got to the point where, okay, well, Jaeger's gone. Where is he? We would go to the tree, and that's where he would be, looking, hiding behind the tree. I thought he was hiding from us. But he wouldn't move when I'd go to get him. He would just keep peeking around looking in that area. So I don't know if he saw something. And these these dogs, I mean, I never worried about the way they were trained. You wanted to break in, good on you. You could take whatever you wanted, put it in your bag. Good luck trying to get out of the house because they'll let you in but they wouldn't let you out is how they were trained. And it's like, okay, well, why is he growling? You know, is there something there? Why are they acting scared, but they're not letting, it's like they were, they were not letting on that they were scared, but you knew that they were scared. If that made sense. And it got to the point where we had to start leaving him at home. And Dagmar, my black female shepherd, she didn't want anything to do with the place, which was odd because she was my Velcro dog. She was stuck to me. But if we were going up north, she stayed home. She wanted nothing to do with it. You know, my my colleague reacted like that on my first encounter. I didn't know that there was anything out in the woods other than small animals. But uh, he went up to... Um, the tree line and he acted, I mean, he was, he was staring very intently at something in the woods, his ears and tail were up. And then he turned around and ran back past me as fast as he could. And I thought, well, that's weird. He's never, never run away from anything, you know? So, um, you, you know, the dogs like different around these things. Okay. I mean, the more I talk about it, the more it's like, okay, well, it was something. I just, I don't know why. I just can't come to the point where I can say, yeah, oh, that's what I saw. You know, he wasn't sitting around the campfire eating the Slim Jim, you know. It wasn't, <laughs> it was like I was looking at a shadow. It's like, okay, well, it's a shadow, but it's more than a shadow. It's there. I know it's there, but what is it? I, I just, I, I feel like I sound crazy when I keep trying to come up with the words to explain it. 
and then looking back at my animals and what they did. And, you know, we, we told the people that we sold the place to, look, you know, you got to watch out. There's, we've got lynx, we've got wolves because there are wolves up there. Um, and, you know, we've got these other animals you, and, you know, if you've got a cat or something, don't let it go outside because <laughs> the people that we bought the place from told us, don't let your animals go out. There's a fisher that's here. It killed our animals. And I said, well, how many animals did it kill? Um, she said, over, they had the property since the 1900s. And they had lost several cats and a couple of dogs. Hmm. And I said, really? A fisher can kill a dog? And I wasn't really sure. A fisher is, I, I think it's kind of like between, kind of like a, between a ferret and a raccoon or something. Yeah. And I'm like, that can actually, Kill a, I, I, I'm like, okay, we'll kill a cat, but kill a dog. And fishes fishes yeah. are related to uh, weasels, and they can they can kill cats, yes. I've but, never heard of them killing a dog. They possibly could take down a small dog, like a dachshund or chihuahua or something like that, but a big yeah, dog, I no. didn't. I didn't ask what kind of dogs. I'm just like, oh, okay, uh, I'll make sure. I mean, we had a cat. We have we had a Maine Coon, but he stayed at home. He didn't come with us. So I wasn't really worried about it, but I'm like, okay, well, I don't want my dog tangling with whatever this is. We never saw any signs of anything like that up there. Because they're like, oh, well, it, it lives underneath the house. There was nothing that lived underneath the house. That, I mean, we were under there doing all kinds of work because, you know, Northwood's ingenuity stuff breaks. Um, yes. You're constantly I... fixing stuff. And there were no signs of any animals whatsoever under the shed, under the house. Um, besides big piles of poop. And I just figured, okay, well, it must be bear poop. I seem to start to interrupt, but we're going to have to wrap up here. We're we're about out of time. Does anybody oh, yeah, have any yeah. final questions? Well, I, I did have, she brought up something that I was going to ask about now. When you said the big piles of poop, were they under the house? No, no, just um, in the woods. Nothing, oh, in the woods. nothing, okay. nothing in the house that would <laughs> indicate that there was anything living under there. I mean, the only thing that we had were, you know, when we would close, we would have like I think they called them bowls, um, that would, you know, get into the house or little chipmunks or something. But other than that, no. Yeah, so, um, I mean, we kind of confused in there because you were talking about uh, not not anything living under the house. And they said something about the big piles of poop, and I was. I was confused about the location of those big piles. <laughs> yeah, that was that was all like around. It, it was like the perimeter of the property. It was like my dog would poop, and then something would poop next to my dog where my dog would poop. That's usually Smoke a predator. It It'll do that. Yeah. yeah. So a, lar- a larger predator establishing its dominance. Well, and Test that was our. Sergeant, what was that? He, I was going to say, do you have any questions for? No, no. Well, we are out of time, folks. Marcy, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, you Don't feel bad about trying to wrap your head around this. That's how most people are. Your story is very credible. I believe you saw what you think you did. Um Everything you describe is classic behavior. So if you need to talk to anybody, we're all here. If you have any questions in the future, if you want to reach out to us, don't hesitate. And we appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, Marcy, any questions you have, just shoot me a text and I'll be happy okay. to answer anything you have, you want to know. I, I just didn't know that something like that would, was there. Oh, yeah. I've heard. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Forrest, you're gonna and, jump in there. Well, yeah, I was just gonna say you can give her my uh, uh, my email address too if she wants to text me, or even okay. my phone number she just wants to text me, and I can. <clears throat> but I, I will tell you, I will say this to you, Marcy. I mean, I'm an uh, I have degrees in anthropology and archaeology, and I'm uh, that there's nothing that prepares you for uh, uh, a front on front 
meeting with one of these creatures. And I mean, I used to always joke when I was uh, going to school that I was going to go discover Bigfoot. Of course, Bigfoot had been long since discovered. They didn't need me out there to, to uh, you know, <laughs> there was plenty of people and natives that knew they existed. They didn't need me to tell them that it did. But, um, you know, and there's nothing that prepares you for it. So uh, you needn't feel silly. And I, like I say, I'm more than happy to help it, help answer any questions. But one thing I would tell you, don't let the dogs run loose out in the woods. <laughs> that's that's oh, no. Um, no. That's not good because he is, they do like they do like passed dogs, away. But they like to eat the dogs. <laughs> yeah, he has since passed away and we have two female black German shepherds and um one her nickname is Chicken Nugget. <laughs> and the other one's Piggy. <laughs> so they stay and they're maybe fifty pounds wet, so they don't they're still in their training stages. He was just that old yeller dog, that once in a lifetime dog that you didn't have to worry about. He, yeah. he had it from the time he was born, you know, just, I just, I find it baffling that he just, that he picked up on it. I mean, he was fierce. He he was fierce, he was loyal, but he was just like, okay, we're done. Let's just, you know, it's it just it's a behavior that isn't him, wasn't him. So I just kind well, of feel like a just... babbling fool when I talk about it. And it just like, okay, well, okay, if that was an encounter, it's kind of like if you see a UFO, you don't expect him to come out and, you know, hey, we come in peace, can we probe you, you know, I get that, but it was just kind of like, do you do you think that they like put like a wormhole or some sort of a vortex or something no, that they come no. out of? Are they no. just walking through the woods? I mean, it was just it was so weird. It was there and then it wasn't. Yeah, they they live there. They're they're uh, living, breathing blood. Uh, you know, uh, flesh and blood. They're not, they're not, uh, the aliens didn't drop them off or anything like that. They've been around for eons of time. That's right. They probably just, get, they probably get probed as much as people do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. They I had to throw that in there. The UFOs show up too. <laughs> I mean, you see a lot of weird stuff up there and you're just like, oh, okay, this is up north. And, and you just go, you know, you just go on about your day. So it's just, <laughs> I, I was more like, okay, who's the jerk that is on my property and did he use all my toilet paper when he was in the outhouse? You know, did he clean up after himself? <laughs> and, and and wait a minute, he wasn't in the outhouse. Did he just go to the bathroom and back of this tree? Why is this person here? It just, it didn't make any sense. It's like, it's, oh my God, it's four o'clock in the morning. You know, why, what? Does the DNR know that you're out here hunting that early? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Listen, I don't know. I need, I, I need to wrap this up. Marcy, yes. thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. I still feel crazy, but you're welcome. Oh, you're not. You're not <laughs> crazy at all. You're not crazy. <laughs> I, I've done this for almost 52 years now, and I've I've heard everything that you've mentioned numerous times. Okay. <laughs> I. I still don't believe it. I, I mean, I believe it, but I don't believe it. So, okay. Right. <laughs> um, I, guess, I guess I'll look into it more. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, thank you so much. And we appreciate you talking to us. Okay. You're, you're welcome. Hopefully I cleared up what Jared had said. I, I, I believe so. so. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, listen, thanks for joining us and stop by next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there.